Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be going over and calibrating my I-177 tube tester. Even though it seems to be working fine, I want to make sure that it's really up to snuff. For example, to make sure that when you put this on 6.3 volts for the filament, that's really what you're getting in the uh, test socket. And to make sure that when you do the line test and you center the meter on here, that you really are getting it in the right position. I'm going to be following these directions. I've printed out online. They seem pretty comprehensive and uh, plenty of uh, good advice in here. I'll uh, put a link up in the description where you can find this. They also list all the equipment you're going to be needing. So I've got that ready. One, they recommend using a tube extender socket like this to make it easier to monitor the pin voltages rather than having to stick the probe meters down into the sockets. Two, uh, the directions uh, uh, call for using a 1000 ohm per volt meter sensitivity. Well, that's kind of hard to come by these days. What that means is the, the, the meter itself would be like uh, an old fashioned volt ohm meter. Something like this guy, which actually draws power out of the circuit to deflect the meter. Well, when you use a modern multimeter like this, it has an input sensitivity of uh, into the mega ohms, I believe. So they recommend using shunt resistors. What that is, is you put a resistor between the positive and the negative to actually load down the circuit while you're measuring it. And on different voltage ranges, they suggest using different resistors. For example, a 5K for 0 to 5 volts, 50K for... 5 to 50 volts and 250k for readings of 50 volts or higher. I don't have those exact values, so instead of 5k, I have a 5.1k. Instead of 50k, I have a 51k. And instead of a 250k, I have a 270k. But I think those are all plenty close enough. I'm also going to take his advice and use a solid state 83. And I'm going to check the 5Y3 tube. Uh, a crucial part of the operation of this tester is that the rectifiers be balanced, meaning that the two rectifier sections inside perform equally well. Um, so an easy way to do that for the 83 is to pop one of these in which has silicon diodes and will be plenty uh, closely matched to each other. The other reason I want to use this is that that 83 tube kicks out a lot of heat that draws 3 amps at 5 volts, so there's 15 watts plus the power dissipated by the uh, uh, plates themselves, so this box has no vents, it gets really toasty in there. Now for the 5Y3, that I'm going to put on another tube tester and check to see that the two plates conduct equally. If they don't, I've got a, a few others I can sort through and I'll pick out the best one. And uh, finally, I'm going to have to pop this back apart, so I've already taken out all the screws and I have to lift this out. I tested about eight five Y threes and it turns out that the one that tested the best was the one that was originally in here so I just put it back in and here's the solid state 83. I then went and checked carefully all of the carbon composition resistors and found three that were out of spec so I've replaced those. The 51k and the 180k no problem I had replacements on hand. The 30k one watt I did not so I had to. Put together a 27K and a 3K to get 30K. And uh, the last thing I'm doing now is I'm going to replace the 0.1 microfarad. And uh, closer inspection, I think this had been replaced at some point because the screw that was holding it in was kind of chewed up. So um, I don't know if this is the original one. Regardless, I'm going to go ahead and replace it with a brand new 0.1 microfarad 630 volt film capacitor. And uh, then I'll power it up and start going through the tests. Alright, I finished replacing the components that were out of spec. I've got a test extension socket into socket E, and I've hooked the meter up to pins 3 and 8. The first test you're supposed to do is to set the line adjustment so that it's right on the line test and push uh, amplifier test. And you should get exactly 150 volts DC. Unfortunately, I don't, even if I turn 
um, sorry, wrong button. Even if I turn the line just all the way down, it's as low as I can get it to be. And that's what I was afraid might happen with that solid state E3 I put in there. It doesn't drop anywhere near enough, as much volts as a real 83 would. It's probably just a couple uh, power silicon diodes inside of that hot glue blob there. Uh, whereas a real 83 would drop uh, somewhere between 50 and 100 volts across the plate. That's probably only dropping like one volt across the diode. Now the guy in this documentation suggested that there would be plenty of range with this line adjustment rheostat so you'd be able to compensate, but with my unit I just can't. Uh, now I could uh, rig up my own solid state replacements with a couple diodes and some series dropping resistors and use matched resistors. But for right now, I'm just going to put the 83 back in. Um, maybe in another day I'll uh, rig up my own solid state diode. But uh, I, I just want to make sure I can go through this whole procedure and that there aren't any other problems and could, uh, then I can uh, deal with maybe replacing that 83. All right, I put the 83 back in and let this warm up for about 15 minutes. Now when I do the amplifier test, I can get it right on about 150. However, when I do the line test in that same position, I'm way off. Uh, what the author says you then need to do is tweak this resistor right here, which has a nominal value of 17 ohms. It's connected to the line test. So hopefully I just need to bring it down and not up in value because then I can just put a resistor in parallel with it and tweak it a little bit. So I'm going to try doing that first. Here's that line uh, adjustment resistor. It's pretty easy to get at. It's right on the end here. Mine measured about 14 ohms and I put a 390 ohm resistor um, in parallel with it which drops the value down just a hair. And now I'm almost dead on. So with the volt amplifier test voltage set at right about 150, and now I check line test and it's almost on. So a little bit more tweaking and I should be there. I think maybe a 330 ohm resistor will do the trick. I went through a bunch of resistors and finally found that 470 ohms in parallel was a magic value. Now when I push amplifier test, I get 150, and when I Press the line test, it's right on the money. Now, the next test is to switch my leads to pin 4 and to pin 8 and check for 130 volts plus minus 2. Uh, so, let's see. Just need to move this lead over in one space. And fire test. And 132.2. Well, that's close enough to 130 plus minus two volts, I'd say. So now, we're supposed to check for an accurate signal voltage of five volts VAC between pins five and eight. So I better switch my meter to AC and go over to pin five. And bam, 505 AC. Plenty close enough. Now I'm supposed to go through different filament switch positions and check that the filament voltage is accurate. So I will go ahead and do that. All right, as I rotate through all the different filament voltages, it's within uh, about half a volt on each range. Like this is the 6.3 volt range, 5 volt range. 4.3, and so on. It's 12.6, 25, 35, so I think that is plenty good. Next up, I'm going to check the DC bias checks. Okay, this is going to check that these pots do what they're supposed to do. So I need to put my meter between pins 5 and 8. Remember to use a correct shunt resistor. And set pot R at 0 and then at 82, so it should be negative 42. So the range for that pot should be 0 to 42 volts for the bias. Alright, I switched my shunt resistor over to the 51K and I switched my leads around. So now I got R at 0 and it's 
essentially zero. And full scale, 43.6, I'd say that's close enough to four, negative 42. And when it's at 18, it should be minus 3, so let's see, 18, and I need to change that uh, shunt resistor a little bit. Remember the point of the shunt resistor is to simulate a 1000 ohm per volt resistance. So in this, for this particular setting it should be around 3 volts, so I just put a 3k resistor in there, and now I'm getting right around uh, 2.9. And you're supposed to be accurate within plus or minus 0.1 volts, so I'm right in there. If it is off, they say to just loosen up the set screw on the knob and get it to where it is about minus 3 volts and reset the screw. Alright, now to check the actual accuracy of the mutual conductance test. That's these three micromo ranges here. To do that, the author suggests feeding in an isolated 10 milliamps AC to pins 3 and 8. To generate that, I've got my variac going through an isolation transformer, going through a series resistor, going to pin 3 and 8. Uh, so if I dial in my variac to 51 volts AC, I've got that going through a 5.1k resistor, which will give me 10 milliamps. And I've got in the 3000 micro micromo range, I've got the L on the GM position. Now when I push this button, I should get 2000. And it's off a bit. Likewise on the 6000, it's a little high. Same on the 15000. So, simple solution there is to loosen up this set screw and tweak this such that it is on. So, if I hold that down, put this at 2000, and now loosen that screw and reposition the knob so it's right at the GM, I'll be all set. You can see it's not off by much, just two ticks, so it's not like the device is horribly, you know, there's nothing there's wrong with it, it's just off a little bit. And as the author, author uh, suggests, that's typically the problem with this, is that these two knobs need to be tweaked just a little bit. Okay, I've repositioned the knob, so it's right on GM. Got my 51 volts AC, and now when I push test, right on 2000. 6000 range, right on 2000. 15000 range, right on 2000. All right. So, next test is the shorts test. To do that. I'm supposed to simulate a short by connecting a 250k resistor between pin 5 and 8 to rotate the shorts knob and so on. So I will get that set up. Okay, I've hooked my resistor up to simulate a short. Now when I get to position 3, this light is supposed to come on. Two. Three. Alrighty. Cool. Now I'm going to check the gas test. Okay, I finished reading through this section on the gas test. And the idea is to simulate a gassy tube using a 6L6. So I've got a known good 6L6 in here. Just to prove it's good, I've got this on the GM test and it reads 5,000 like a good 6L6 should. Now I'm supposed to put this all the way up to 82 and press gas 1 and adjust the R so I get a reading of 100 which is right about there. Then when I push gas 2 it should barely move like it does. Now I'm supposed to insert a 1 mega ohm resistor to simulate some gas leakage between the control grid and heater, which is pin 5 and 7. So I'll hook that up. Okay, I've got my 1 mega ohm resistor hooked up. Now the idea is I hold down gas 1 again. Now when I press gas 2, the needle should jump up noticeably. And there we go. So if I did in fact have a gassy tube, that's what it would look like. So cool, gas test is working. And by the way, these test sockets, these tube extender sockets, 
extremely handy to have not just for doing something like this but in general working on radios or TVs because they allow you to check the voltage uh, at the pins and the signal at the pins from the top of the chassis instead of having to dig around underneath there's also a variation on this called a socket saver which doesn't have the pins sticking out the sides like these do and what those are great for is putting in to tube testers and you leave them in there and then you plug your tube under test into that the idea being that you want to wear out this socket long uh, instead of wearing out this socket because these are not easy to replace as you can see there aren't any mounting screws or anything so if one of these was to get broken or wear out or whatnot not so easy to change out so if you're going to be using your tube tester a lot good idea to get some uh, socket savers next test uh, let's see the diode rectifier and zero Z4 test. Okay, for the diode test, you want to check for 19 volts AC between pins 3 and 8 while you press the diode test. So, there we go. Perfect. Now I need to hook up a diode. I say use a common diode like a 1N4007, like I've got here. And uh, use a 1K resistor and then press the diode test. Alright, I have to grab a resistor, do a little soldering, and then resume. Okay, I've got my diode and resistor hooked up. When I press the diode test, it should read at or near diodes OK. And uh, there it is. So that appears to be alright. Now we'll move on to the rectifier test. Okay, that checked fine, so I jumped ahead to the 0Z4 test, which you use a 10K 10 watt power resistor, because that puts about 312 volts AC across the rectifier. And when I push this, test okay. And that's it. Um, the last suggestion here is to put in a 6L6, it's a known quality, and then uh, enjoy your calibrated I-177. So I'll go ahead and put that 6L6 back in and do one final check. I let this 6L6 warm up for a while. But before I test it, I want to recheck the line test. I had originally set this without any tubes in the circuit. But as you put different types of tubes in here to test, especially ones that draw a lot of current, that line test is going to change. And you always want to make sure it's dead on because every reading is based on that line test being set. So, as you can see, it's dropped a bit. That's because this tube draws a lot of current, which throws the meter off. Now, before you do any amplifier tests, you always want to check for shorts. So, no shorts. Now, when you set these LR controls, as shown in the tube setup chart, that will be for the English reading or the replace good reading, not the micro modes. So when I press the test, there, it's a good tube. To read the micro modes, you have to set the control at GM. And I already know that this tube draws about 6,000 when it's good, so I'm going to put this in the 6,000 range. And there we go right about 5,000, which is exactly what a good 6L6 should draw. So, uh, that's it. Uh, I glossed over a little bit of the stuff, if there were any actual problems on how to rectify them. I'll put the link to the site that's got these uh, calibration instructions, so you can go over them yourself in more detail. So I hope any of you guys out there who have an I-177 found this useful, and I hope you can get yours working very well too.